Hello everybody, Ash Game here, and today we're going to be looking at a game from Game Jolt by Snow Owl called It Moves. A little bit late to this party, but um, we're just going to hop right into it. So, um, I tried to record this before, but on the first time it couldn't render properly and the, my computer just crashed. So we're going to be starting again and doing um, on a different recording software. Hopefully it'll go a lot better. So, let's begin. Bedtime. Bedtime is supposed to be a happy event for a tired child. For me, it was terrifying. While well, some children might complain about being put to bed before they have finished watching a film or playing their favorite video game when I was a child, nighttime was something to truly fear. Somewhere in the back of my mind, it still is. This is me. So, I remember playing this a uh, little bit before, and the first time I was still kind of eh, a little bit, a little bit wonky. Mr. Teddy, um, full of toys and stuff. Poster from a movie, got it from my brother. Table. Table, yes. Yes, the almighty table. It deserves some recognition. Can I get in the chair? Nope. How about this lamp? It's a wolf. Okay, so it's the game's assuming that I, I was talking about the lamp. I cannot prove that what happened to me was objectively real, but I can swear that what I experienced was genuine horror, a fear which in my life, I'm glad to say, has never been equaled. I will relate it to you all now as best I can, and make of it what you will, but I'll be glad to just get it off of my chest. A lot of things going on here. Okay, so flowers. Mom put these here. Ooh, right in the middle of the hallway too. A uh, picture of some mountains. That's cool. This is my father. Oh, cool. Don't go pulling out too much stuff now. It's bedtime soon. Why does it have to be nighttime already? Shoes. Not very interesting. Why can't shoes be interesting? That makes no sense. A picture of a man standing around. I think it's dad when he was younger. Is he a creep? Is he one of those? Is he one of those stereotypical guys that just hangs out on the bleachers at a football field, just watching people? I can't remember exactly when it started, but my apprehension towards falling asleep seemed to correspond with my being me, with my being moved into a room of my own. That was a that was a handful. Okay, so what do we got here? We got a bed, um, ventilation. I think Mom said this is boxes full of stuff. That's cool. Just a bunch of clothes in here. Man with a mustache. I, I commented on this before, talking about, like, um, is it uh, the guy from Saturday Night Live? And then I totally, completely forgot what the guy from Saturday Night Live looked like. Mom told me not to touch her stuff, especially this stuff. Ooh. Actually, again, does uh, Saturday Night Night Live guy have a mustache? That's, that's a good question. I should look it up. Nothing too interesting. Yep. This is my mother. How do you like your new room? Assume you'll be sleeping alone for the first time. It's not a good feeling to want to sleep alone. Is there anything down here? No, just the end of the hallway. This is my brother's room. He told me yesterday to keep out of the room that we both had shared until then. I was eight years old at the time and until then I had shared a room quite happily with my older brother. As is perfectly understandable for a boy five years my senior, so five years older, my brother eventually wished for a room of his own and as a result I was given the room at the back of the house. As my brother was given a new bed, I was given the bunk beds which we used to share. While I was upset about sleeping on my own, I was excited at the thought of being able to sleep in the top bunk, which seemed far more adventurous to me. I mean, sleeping in the bunk bed is okay. And, okay, so the brother lives in a new room. He wanted to be alone. Is that some kind of independent mark for people? Like, being able to sleep on their own instead of just in bunk beds? Alright, it's bedtime. Already? Yes, adults need their sleep, you see. You'll be sleep sleeping alone for the first time. You excited? Yes, mom. Yes. Absolutely excited. Absolutely excited to panic. I'm gonna panic. You gonna panic? Alright, I'm turning off the lights. Good night. Good night. 
incredibly dark. My room is not exactly this dark. I mean, it doesn't have a nightlight, so it's definitely not as bright either, but... Definitely not as dark. Chapter 1. Cave. Ooh. Save. So don't mind these. It's because I played before and with a failed recording. Alright. So we got mushrooms. Why can't I have these mushrooms? Why can't I even look at them? I still have that question. What is that? That thing looks really weird. It looks like a frog and an owl put together. I'm over here with a bush. And then butterflies over there. Another bush. And then a water hole. Small water hole. Water's dirty. Probably not a good idea to drink it. Hmm. Would be interesting to drink it though, wouldn't it? I mean, if if I had a pot and heat, I'd be able to boil the water to uh, purify it. Is that how that works? I'm pretty sure that's how that works. I just noticed um, <laughs> that rat on t on the roof, staring into your soul essentially. Okay. Uh, a pot and some ragged cloth. I wonder what's cooking. Probably the mushrooms from outside. There's, there's a stalker guy. Stalking is such a strong word. I prefer to think of it more as intense research on one individual. By the way, your missing sock is under your bed with me. That's interesting. So, just, just kidding. So is it like a case study? Like one of those in-depth researches on somebody? A cold, unwelcoming breeze comes from the bottom of the stairs. Go down, or stay here. I want to go down. We'll go down. We'll go down, why not? Oh god. Is this what normal stone looks like? I'm pretty sure that's not what stone looks like. Weird mushroom looks this poisonous. Ooh. Poisonous mushrooms? That's not good. I saw that. Oh god. I'm already disturbed. And I've already played this before and I'm still scared. Weird mushroom. It looks poisonous. A lot of poisonous mushrooms. Maybe the demons down here have been doing mushrooms. They've been doing a lot of shrooms in their life. Purple mushroom. Definitely poisonous. Hmm. Hi. How are ya? Would you like a cookie? I don't got any cookies. There is red liquid seeping out from the mushroom hat. I bet that's poisonous too. Because it keeps mentioning how everything's poisonous. Uh huh. Mm. I remember there wasn't anything back there. I'm still not sure why that's even there. Hi. Okay. Have fun. You are that spider thingy. Did it! Did it for the second time. I'm a genius. When it comes to those. So, some mushrooms. I yeah, remember these don't leading anywhere either. This is a pretty massive cave, even though it doesn't branch off too much. That sounded like a pig dying. So is there a butcher over there chopping pigs up? I don't feel like going back, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Very, very unpleasant. Not to mention that this um, kid has uh, some very meticulous nightmares. Oh, oh dear. Now it was a spider thingy with a face on it. So spiders now have faces. I mean, th yeah, they have spa faces in real life too, but human like face. Oh boy. Oh boy. So are these... What are these? 
these things look like vines. They're probably not vines. Alright, so my character's now walking. I don't want to go across this bridge. It just looks like it goes down into uh, a deep abyss. If I fall off, it's going to be... Okay. okay. Hi. Is that a skull? I see a skull. Till we get, um, will would there ever come a time when we come back to that cave to see what the end of it is? Mom, I had a bad dream. Mom, mama, mama, mommy. No need to go here right now. I shouldn't go outside right now. Really. Mom! Mom, I had a bad dream. Help me, Mama. Sweetie, what's wrong? I had a bad dream. Well, that's too bad, sweetie. I'll be up in a minute, and we can eat breakfast together. Alright, hurry up. Go change your clothes, and I'll be right there. I just noticed that the portions of text are kind of faded out. I don't, I don't think that's representative of anything, but it's just how it is. Okay. So he's gonna change change clothes for himself. He doesn't need my help. And so another day started. It was a day of little importance to our story. I won't bother you with details. The one thing I remember is that even though I played with friends like I always did, I somehow still felt lonely. I didn't enter my room until later that night. It was time to go to sleep again. Makes, this game makes sleeping seem like it's the biggest problem. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, seems like we're gonna fall asleep. I was in my, um, blue pajamas. I like blue, so that was very creative. Creative? Wasn't really creative at all. I don't even know what I'm talking about. Chapter 2. Labyrinth. Pretty sure it's labyrinth. I could be wrong. Save. Yes. Yes, please. Um. Okay. So from what I remember, um, these buttons were marked by symbols, and you had to um press them in a certain order to get to get the doors to open. That way you could explore the rest of the maze. Although, um, when I last played this, I was pretty, I was pretty sure that, um, some kind of machine, that the objective was that over time you would encounter this little red guy and he would just pop up and just generally be a problem solver. It's to speed up the process. Yep, and then his face just appears, and then he just stays there. It never goes away. It never goes away. And then, eventually at the end, it just gets super annoyed. Although it is kind of freaking horrifying that this guy keeps looking at me, like, with that thousand mile stare. Instructions on how to use a fire extinguisher. Makes me kind of curious as to where this place is, and why it looks so abandoned. Looks like a thing. Maybe, maybe there. It's not an actual place. It's just the kid's imagination. But it's it's still there. Kind of interesting though how detailed this his um, nightmares are. Maybe he may not remember the specifics. Hi. But like actual specifics of everything. But definitely more detailed than my nightmares were. Uh, I noticed that the picture is definitely getting brighter. Um, uh, it seems like he's starting to run now. This, this everlasting.
casting face. That's why she may need to have such stuff with her. I'm not having trouble just walking through these paths. The ambiance gets pretty loud. Mark my words, audience. I am certainly aware of the ambiance. So. Oh dear. Yep. from a deep sleep to something moving or stirring. It can take a few moments for you to truly understand what is happening. The fog of sleep hangs over your eyes and ears even when lucid. Something was moving. There was no doubt about that. At first I wasn't sure what it was. Everything was dark, almost pitch black. But there was enough light creeping in from outside to outline that room. Two thoughts appeared in my mind almost simultaneously. The first was that my parents were in bed because the rest of the house lay both in darkness and silence. The second thought turned to the noise, a noise which had obviously woken me. That was it, bed sheets rustling in the dark and someone breathing, as if some disturbed sleeper was attempting to get all too comfortable in the bottom bunk. I lay there in disbelief, thinking that the noise was either my imagination or perhaps just my pet cat finding somewhere comfortable to spend the night. I don't think my, uh, a cat could make that much noise. It was then that I noticed my door, shut as it had been as I'd fallen asleep. Perhaps my mom had checked in on me and the cat had sneaked into my room then. Yes, that must have been it. I turned to face the wall, closing my eyes in the vain hope that I could fall back to sleep. As I moved, the rustling noise from underneath me ceased. I thought that I must have disturbed my cat. But quickly I realized that the visitor in the bottom bunk was much less mundane than my pet trying to sleep, and much more sinister. As if already seemed disrupted by my presence, the disturbed sleeper began to toss and turn violently. So, I'm curious as to, as to whether or not this disturbed sleeper in the bottom bunk is this um, kid at a much younger age having nightmares. Because if you have nightmares, usually um, you're you know you're thrashing you're tossing in, in your bed maybe not as um violently as uh the person in this bottom bunk but it's still there you know, i mean even in your adulthood if you have like an extreme nightmare um you could still like twitch a little bit and toss and turn especially if you're uncomfortable in the bed like a child having a tantrum in the bed it feels like there's something there's like an implicit way of saying that what I just said was true. I could hear the sheets twist and turn with increasing ferocity. Fear then gripped me, not like the subtle sense of unease I had experienced earlier, but now potent and terrifying. My heart raced as my eyes panicked. Scanning the almost impenetrable darkness, I let out a cry. So, I just... It, it's kind of interesting, really, because uh, when we were, when, you know, when everybody's younger, darkness is like this ever so vast thing that we look at. It could be a closet, it could be under the bed, it could be an open door, and then you just look out during the night if you wake up from some kind of nightmare, and you just look at there, or even under the covers. Me personally, I cannot go under the covers during the night because it is black. And after I saw, um, I forgot the movie name, but the movie that had the uh, kid crawling under the sheets and then met with a um, demon girl. Yeah, that's why I can't do that anymore. But it's kind of the same concept and it's really interesting how it works. Although, I don't know if fear really um I don't even know where I was trying to go with that statement but it's kind of um, interesting how much 
fear can take hold during the night because you could be visualizing things that don't even um, exist. As most young boys do, I instinctively shouted on my mother. I could hear something stir on the other side of the house, but as I began to breathe a sigh of relief that my parents were coming to save me, the bunk bed started, suddenly started to shake violently as if gripped by an earthquake, scraping against the wall. I could hear the sheep below me thrashing around as if tormented by malice. I did not want to jump down to safety as I feared the thing in the bottom bunk would reach out and grab me, pulling me into the darkness, so I stayed there. White knuckles clenching my own blanket like a shroud of protection. The wait seemed like an eternity. What's wrong? Did you have a bad dream? I cried and my mother consoled me. Tears of fear, followed by relief, streamed down my face. Yet through all the horror and relief, I did not tell her why I was so upset. I cannot explain it, but it was as though whatever had been in that bunk would return, if I even so much as spoke of it. Whether that child was the truth... I do not know, but as a child I felt as if that unseen menace remained close, listening. My mother lay in the empty bunk, promising to stay there until morning. Hmm. Very, very interesting. I remember the next day wanting to go anywhere, be anywhere, but in that suffocating room. It was a Saturday and I played outside, quite happily with my friends. Although our, hor our, ho horse <laughs> our house was not large, we were lucky to have a long sloping garden in the back. We played there often, as much of it was overgrown and we could hide in the bushes, climbing the huge sycamore tree which towered above all else and easily imagine ourselves in the throes of a grand adventure. As fun as it all was, occasionally my eye would turn to that small window in my room, ordinary, slight, and innocuous. But for me, that thin boundary was a looking glass into a strange, cold pocket of dread. Outside, the lush green surroundings of our garden filled with the smiling faces of my friends. Inside, the feeling of something in that room watching me play, waiting for the night when I would be alone, eagerly filled with hate. It may sound strange to you, but by the time my parents ushered me back into that room for the night, I said nothing. I didn't protest. I didn't even make an excuse as to why I couldn't sleep there. I still felt that this thing would be enraged if I so much as spoke of it another night came. Sorry for that, seems a little bit rushed. Chapter 3 Factor. Banner on the long pole, it's too old and torn to make up the details, a huge skull, the door is firmly shut, a banner on the long pole is too old, too old and torn out to make out details. Well, it would be interesting to continue, but that is going to have to wait until the next episode. So thank you guys so much for watching, rate, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.